What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, and if you want to climb, then I'm about to tell you the most powerful strategy in order to climb. Yep, you heard me right, this is by far the most powerful strategy, and I'm going to be breaking that down so that you can climb really easily. Before we get started, of course, the Game Leap website has courses, advanced courses that you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. We got training courses from the ground up, VOD reviews, in-depth mechanical guides, stuff really niche that you've never seen. Stuff, stuff that's specifically targeted to improve your mechanics, your game sense, your positioning, whatever you need to improve, we got it for you at the Game Leap website. So do yourself a favor, go check it out in the links down below, but enough talking. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So, okay, enough of the slow roll. The most powerful strategy in the game in order to climb is peeling. Yes, it is the most powerful tactic, and I know you're going to be like, okay, whatever, peeling. No, trust me, this is the most powerful way to climb. It is consistently necessary to climb. It is something that you have to master, and it's basically used every single second at the pro level. It's the most powerful tactic that you can do from every single roll. DPS support tank, yes, you could do it, and if you can't climb, it's probably because you don't do this. Now, before we break in all the things that you need to do and different intricacies around peeling, let's first define what peeling is. Well, peeling at its core is just helping. So, peeling is coming back for a teammate and either healing them or helping them, and you can do that in multiple ways. Let's give you an example. Your Ana is getting dove by a monkey. Now, Sure, she can hit the sleep dart, but if she misses, she's going to die. What is peeling? Well, maybe you're a Roadhog, and you go and you hook the monkey, and then the monkey dies. Or maybe you go and you're McCree, and you go and you stun the monkey. Or maybe you're just a healer like a Mura, and you heal your Ana to where the monkey can't kill her. All of these are forms of peeling, and essentially what you're doing is you're just bailing a team out for either their mistake or them just getting targeted or singled out, dived, or whatever. That is what peeling is at its core, and this is the center of the video. Trust me. It is more than meets the eye. So what is the great thing about peeling and why is it so powerful? I claim that it's the most powerful strategy in the game, but am I just lying to you? No, I'm not lying to you. Let me tell you why. Here's the great thing about peeling. Tell me what happens if a monkey jumps into your team and you're just a Zen. What usually happens? Well, you die. It's a 1v1, but the monkey engaged on you and you're going to die. Now, tell me what happens if a McCree comes and helps you out when you're a Zen. Or what about a McCree and a Roadhog? Or McCree, Roadhog, and Mora. Or McCree, Roadhog, Mora, and Soldier. All of those characters come and help you. What happens then? Well, it's not a 1v1 anymore. It's not even a 2v1 or a 3v1. It could be all the way up to a 5v1 or even a 6v1. That is the great thing about peeling. The enemy is making a play onto you, but if you come and peel, you basically make it unfair for that enemy. They basically give you their life on a silver platter. You didn't have to go seek out that kill. You didn't even have to go make a play or position in a way to make an aggressive play on the enemy. All you did was protect someone, and as a result, you got a free kill, and now you get to move on with the numbers advantage, which everyone knows, you got a numbers advantage, you're exponentially more likely to win fights. Even at the pro level, first blood means you're just like way more likely to win a fight. It's like an astronomically huge percentage, and that is what getting a free peel kill does for you. Now, let me tell you what you're doing wrong with peeling, because there might be a lot of things you're doing wrong. The first thing is, if you are getting peeled, like if someone is peeling for you, let's say it's a McCree, you should be helping the person peeling for you if they're better at doing the job that needs to be done. And let me give you this example. If a monkey jumps on top of you, right, and your McCree comes in to help you, what, regardless of what he's doing, he's in the fight, maybe he's even 50 HP because you're not healing him because you're being dove, of course. That's not your fault, you're being dove, but he is coming back to help you. Instead of trying to kill the monkey, you should be healing your McCree because he can kill that monkey better. This is essentially, in an essence, he comes and helps you, you help him, y'all get the job done together. This is pretty much par for the course. This is the most important thing you need to understand as the person that's getting peeled. But as a peeler, if someone helps you when you help them, it could be mutually beneficial for everybody. You get that person off them or you kill them and then you move on with your business as usual. Now, some characters peel better than others. And this is a pretty important concept to touch on because some characters just suck at it and some characters are great at it. Let me give you three examples of characters that are really good at peeling. Roadhog, McCree, Lucio. I mentioned them in the past. 
These characters are really good for a number of reasons. Roadhog is really good because he's pretty much self-sufficient, so he's not going to need as much heals or resources when he comes in peel. And he's really good at shutting enemies down that are on one of his supports or whoever. He has a hook. He can just shut people down with that CC. He has a lot of burst damage. That is great. Like I said, with the monkey example, even a tracer, he hooks up. He saves the life of his support. He's great. McCree, of course, is great because he can deal damage from that medium ways away. So he could be like behind his tank. All he has to do is turn around and look at his support and he's already in line of sight to help her or of course he could stun some of the pesky divers and basically just shut those characters down especially Hammond is a big one that could be really annoying and then Lucio is another character that it can peel for pretty much anybody no matter who they are because Lucio can speed them out she he can boop and create distance now he's not necessarily going to help you turn the tables on someone like a monkey jumps in he's not going to necessarily let you kill that monkey but he will get you to safety while wasting the monkey's time that is definitely a great thing to do now let's talk about some characters that suck at peeling characters like widow genji arissa these characters not very good at peeling for all different reasons widow is bad at peeling because if she tries to come at you and help you she could just become the target herself and if like a monkey jumps in sure she could do some pressure and threat but she's usually positioned in a way not really paying attention to that monkey so she's just like not a very good peeler but that's okay that's not really her job if you're a widow maker it's not expected of you to peel and as someone who needs peel don't expect your widow maker to peel for you at all times but occasionally she's gonna one shot that tracer that is on top of you and that will be great but not expected another characters like genji yes he technically has burst damage but he doesn't have cc and his burst damage can work sometimes it really depends on the situation and traditionally when he's on the flank or setting up for his own play he's not in position to really peel so that is just another thing and then arissa of course she's on the front line doing her own thing she's not going to be able to peel in the same way that an off tank could someone like sigma or roadhog or whoever these characters are going to be kind of playing back way better at the peeling job and those characters should be peeling more of course now let's talk about the different types of peel and there are different types and they each have different amounts of value the first one is the turn the tables we talked about that before that is a monkey jumps in tracer jumps in and instead of them getting a kill like they wanted they die and you get a numbers advantage that's pretty great now there's other types of peel because you can't always just get that perfect scenario the other type is just to save them and that is just put enough pressure on the enemy to just force them to leave like you put enough pressure on the enemy tracer to force that tracer to use recall and then she's not free to just go in anymore and she has to leave that is a decent form of peel that keeps your ally alive because you need them alive if you want to give value but it's not going to just turn the tables right away now the last one is just get them out and this is just getting your teammates a better position like if the enemy dives on them you could speed them out as lucio or you could boop enemies away as whatever character whole hog them away get your teammate to a better position it should really, really be communicated. And this is the most important tip that I'm going to give you through the entire video when peeling or being peeled. You need to be communicating with the person you're peeling for and communicate when you need peel. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious, but it's important. If you're McCree coming back at 50 HP to go help your Ana, you need to communicate, hey, I'm coming to peel for you, but I'm low. Heal me up and I will help you. That's really simple. Or say something like, hey, I'm going to speed you out. Let's leave. That is the way you communicate. Because the last thing you want to do is you try to come in as Lucio and speed your Ana out. But your Ana's like, no, I'm going to DPS. I'm just going to shoot the monkey. And then she dies. It's like, maybe you die as a result too because you tried to peel her. And, and she didn't listen to you, so you stayed too long and you died. And when you need peel, it is really important for you to communicate at all costs. And I'm going to talk more about what you can do as someone who needs peel all the time to make sure that you get more consistent peel so that you stay alive longer in your games, which of course is going to make you climb. Now, now, yes, I know what you're going to say right off the bat. You're going to say, hey, solo queue. I'm playing solo queue here. No one's going to peel for me. Well, I would highly suggest duo queuing at the very least. Duo queuing could really let you set up these peels 100% of the time. You could just be playing. Like if you're an Ana player or a Zen player, God forbid, or whoever, you could basically find a partner that has the capability to peel for you. And then you can help them out as a result in the same way. Or you could peel for them when they're in danger because you're a healer or whatever. Setting that up up and having a partner that is like they really thrive together and can peel for each other you just make it to where you never ever get caught out by yourself with everyone just not paying attention to you at all so that's one of the biggest reasons why i would suggest duo queuing out of anything is consistent peel that you could do 100 percent of the time in every game you play now a lot of people when they're playing something like hog right they want to go on that flank hog that six hard blue style hog just go into the enemy team hook like three people and 
carry the game, right? Yes, this playstyle might even have more impact than peeling some percentage of the time, but it does require a lot more from you mechanically. Like, what do you have to do when you go flank out Roadhog? You have to position well, you have to track where the enemies are, you have to hit consistent hooks, all of this. What do you have to do when you're peeling? What do you have to do? You just have to be there. You have to hit really simple hooks or pressure enemies off. And you could get a kill out of that or just save someone, which is just saving a life, which is like gaining a person that you would have lost. There is a lot more value on average in just peeling. And it's going to be something that consistently and reliably gets you value with very little mechanical skill needed. And I personally believe this. You could have trash tier mechanics. And I mean, you can't hit anything. Very, very bad. And you could climb to at least masters if you just peel consistently. That's all you need to do. Just peel consistently. And I, I really mean this. All you have to do is just think epic about your teammates and just try to peel for them as much as possible keep them alive if you're doing this when no one else is which if you've been playing your games i'm sure that you do not know what peeling even feels like because no one peels for you but if you do this you will be someone that is just doing more than the other people the other people at your rank and you're going to climb as a result it's as simple as that now Let's go on to another question, which is, as someone who needs peel all the time, maybe you're playing that honor, that Zen, or whatever, maybe even a McCree, or someone fragile, you need peel all the time, what can you do to make sure that you get peel? The first thing is, you need to be paying close attention to what characters are setting up to make a play on you. This means being really hyper aware of where enemies are setting up to. Like if they're setting up in the high ground, they're routing around. If you can call to your teammates before you get jumped that it's looking like you're going to, that will be better because most of the time, if you're already being jumped and you say, hey, I need peel, hey, I need peel, hey, I need peel, by the time they turn around, know where you are, look at you, you're already dead, right? But if you can make sure that you're just talking about it beforehand say hey this monkey's on the right side hey i think this monkey is gonna jump me hey i need some help ahead of time this could be a way that your teammates actually even if they're slow they don't really pay attention they're not being hyper vigilant themselves all they have to do is just listen to your call it makes it a lot simpler for them instead of you know them having to react to your call and by the time they do it's too late so that's the first thing you could do the second thing you could do is just make sure you survive through positioning first if you position really defensively or you position in a way where enemies have to dive in and chase after you and they have to chase you through your team or behind your team it's a lot easier for your teammates to peel for you your teammates don't have to go out of their way to peel for you instead they're, your teammates basically get to peel for you very easily. They just turn around, they look at you. It's very, very simple. And on top of that, because you're positioning so well, you're not going to die right away. So you have more time to get peeled. Because if from the time of contact to the time of death is like instant, like I talked about before, the time to peel is so, so, so small. And unless they've watched this video and they're really proactively thinking about peeling, they're just not going to be able to peel for you in time. But if you survive for like 10 seconds and you like, you get chased by a monkey, he's chasing you, he's chasing you, he runs out of his bubble, he's still chasing you, you nade yourself, he's still chasing you, he's still chasing you. Like, that's a lot of time, right? But... It, it won't always be that way if you basically set yourself up for failure because of your positioning. And then the last thing is just hit your impactful abilities, whatever character you are. If you hit your abilities, you're going to need less peel and you're going to give your teammates more time to peel for you. Like you hit your flashbang, you hit your sleep dart, you boop enemies out. You don't get caught out by these enemies like multi dives at the same time. You got to hit your impactful abilities. And if you consistently miss your sleep dart on a monkey, you consistently miss your flashbang on a tracer, then yes, Yes, of course, you could get bailed out with peel, but you're going to lose because a lot of times people are not going to peel for you. And realistically, you could have done something to peel for yourself or support yourself. So I'm not saying you have to do this 100% of the time. I'm just saying that if you can't do this at least partial or part of the time, then you're never going to climb to a rank where you have teammates that are going to peel for you consistently, if I'm being honest with you. Now, moving on to the last thing I got to talk about, and this is peeling as a setup. And this could be called like the counter hack or the counter dive or whatever. And what you're doing in this strategy is you're literally like sending out your Zen as a sacrificial pawn, right? He's just like a little sheep and the wolves want to jump him. The Doomfist want to jump him. The Hammond wants to jump him. But the plan of you, whoever you are, all you're doing is just waiting for them to do so and you punish them for it. You could be a Roadhog hiding. And the second that your Zen gets dove on, you just pop out and kill them. You're basically setting up a trap. And this is like 
basically peeling as an entire playstyle. And the counter dive playstyle has been used in pro play too. It's not just something that can only work in ranked play, although it works exponentially well in ranked play, especially when you're talking about characters like Doomfist, characters like Hammond, whose whole purpose is to go dive in on your supports or dive in on your backline. If they do that, they, they do the playstyle that they've always played in every single one of their games, but this one time, there's this like hog that's you that just keeps punishing them for it. You're going to get a lot of value out of that. So that is just one way. That's one example to get value out of just peeling as a concept. But I really hope that this video has better helped you understand why peeling is so important. Why you should use it in your games. Why it's so strong. Peel more. Duo more and have a peeler partner. All of this will help you climb. I guarantee it. But if you have any questions about this concept, why you should do it or anything like that, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if you want further improvement, high quality guides, advanced concepts, videos even more high quality than any of the stuff we put out on the YouTube channel, definitely go check out GameLeap.com. We have tons and tons of guides, just crazy amount of guides. So go check it out. But thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate you. Have a good day. I'm Coach Mills. And until next time, 